Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Top Three Considerations for Selecting Entity Management Software, Security, Automation, and Enhancement. My name is Anu Shaw, and I will be your moderator. Joining us today are David Jeffries and Andrea Janaitis. David is a Senior Sales Engineer for Compliance and Governance Services at CSC in the Wilmington, Delaware headquarters. With CSC for over 11 years, he has significant experience providing training, implementation, and consultative services to clients of CSC Entity Management and consults with those evaluating CSC Matter Management Solutions. Andrea is a sales engineer in the Corporate and Legal Solutions Group at CSC. Since joining CSC in 2017, Andrea has specialized in global subsidiary management and entity management, working with prospects to present an accurate and clear scope of services, including helping subsidiaries stay in compliance, as well as demonstrating CSC entity management. And with that, let's welcome David and Andrea. Wonderful. Thank you, New. We're very excited to be here. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. We absolutely appreciate it. And so there's quite a bit for us to cover in today's webinar. Uh, and we want to make sure that we have some time uh, at the tail end for some Q&A. Certainly, as Anu mentioned, we can uh, look to try to respond to some questions maybe during the presentation, but we often save that kind of towards the tail end. So let's kind of you know, jump in. And uh, first, let's cover the agenda for today's presentation. We're going to talk about you know, what is entity management. You know, we want to make sure that everyone is really on the same page when we're using that terminology. We'll talk a little bit about the entity management, sort of the life cycle of an entity and how that uh, kind of plays, in, 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 uh, plays a role, pardon me, in the, the equation here. We'll talk about, as Anu mentioned, the top three considerations when looking for an entity management software solution. So we'll talk about security automation and uh, kind of the roadmap enhancements, how that, that fits in. Uh, and then really the exciting thing is that we're going to take a bit of a deep dive into the CSE Entity Management Solution. There are a number of recent upgrades that we've launched uh, this past year, uh, including a, a feature that's ready to go live Monday. So it's a bit of a sneak preview for our audience to take a look at one of our really new exciting features around uh, document security. And then, you know, as I noted, we certainly want to make sure there are some times for questions at the end of the presentation. So with that, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what is entity management when we're using that term? And sometimes it can mean different things to different people. Uh, and really, I think at its core, entity management is about keeping your entities in compliance. And certainly, uh, that can be complicated in and of itself. We're talking about uh, international requirements, state, local, federal. If you have business licenses, you know, that adds just another layer of complexity into the equation of really maintaining uh, compliance for your entities. Entity management really is also you know, what could be described as a, a practice or a discipline. So we're talking about managing information, documents, compliance events, uh, and being able to report against that information for your organization. And then really where software comes into play, which is going to be certainly a, a focus today, is having uh, secure access to that information in real time and having oversight and transparency for uh, individuals certainly within your organization, uh, but also for individuals outside of your organization as well. One of the features that we'll take a look at that's one of the upgrades later on is an org charting capability, which really presents a unique opportunity to sort of share information with you know, third parties like investors and, and auditors and such. So with that, let's talk a little bit about why entity management matters to organizations. Why should we care? Uh, and so one of the reasons that entity management is so critical is that the regulatory framework is becoming uh, ever more challenging and there's more scrutiny really than there's ever been in terms of maintaining compliance for companies. So, you know, going back, for example, to the financial crisis in the States um, around 2008 or so, certainly we've seen some changes there. Uh, for any of the members of our audience that have entities in the European part of the world, I'm sure GDPR is a, a series of letters that you've heard of and are maybe becoming more and more familiar with as that framework starts to come into focus. And so, again, it's, it's very uh, complicated uh, and there's more scrutiny than ever before. <clears throat> Also, if you take a look uh, at sort of the bottom bullet point here, we talk about utilizing the proper software to manage entity data to, to lower costs. And so, again, we're going to talk a lot about where the, the software kind of fits into the equation. And really, I kind of thought about this uh, this morning, and um, the members of our audience may be familiar with, there's a kind of a theory called jobs to be done. So there's a Harvest, or Harvard business professor, uh, last name Christensen, who's kind of formulated and popularized this theory that people buy products and implement solutions really to get something done uh, and to get that work done or that job done more efficiently, more effectively than they could without that solution. And so if we sort of think about entity management from that framework, you know, what are some of the jobs 
that we need to perform as practitioners that are managing entities and keeping them in compliance. And there's certainly a number of things that come to mind. We need to be able to generate consents, you know, create org charts very dynamically. We need to stay on top of our compliance filings and ha easily have access to lists of directors and officers. And so entity management software really represents an opportunity to do those jobs, so to speak, uh, more effectively, more efficiently. And so hopefully that will kind of shine through in terms of what you'll see later. So you mentioned this concept, David, of, of jobs to be done. And so this next slide talks about the actual management of your entity life cycle. And as you all know, it's incredibly complicated. And the complexity of managing these entities in their life cycle, it just grows with the regulatory complexity that David just mentioned uh, previously. There's so many aspects to this process. Um, and each nuance for each of these steps, whether you are forming or acquiring new entities, trying to maintain your good standing of your entities, managing those changes to your portfolio, to your capital or share information, or your officers or directors, the process of withdrawing or dissolving your entities, and so many other changes that you have throughout your entity life cycle. And it really goes without saying that you need to have a software or a solution that really can dynamically support your business and grow with the needs of your portfolio. So what about uh, international entities here? Your entity management system needs to extend not just across your U.S. portfolio, but also your global portfolio. And the corporate secretarial requirements for entities outside of the United States are very different from what we're used to here in the United States with the management of our uh, U.S. domestic entities. Maintaining your positive standing globally, it's really not as straightforward as just appointing a registered agent or filing reports throughout the year. There's so many differences of things that need to take place or need to happen, and they're all based on jurisdictional rules or the entity types, and you need to consider all of these factors. And again, a good technology solution is going to be able to provide you with a very robust and centralized repository of data and information that makes meeting those requirements much easier for our clients. And so with that, and we certainly appreciate everyone with, you know, for providing the responses, we do want to now get into what we feel are some of the, the top considerations when evaluating an entity management solution. And again, there are so many that we could potentially talk about, but we're today going to focus on sort of three uh, top considerations, security, automation, and again, that concept of regular enhancements or, or roadmap. And so Andrew and I have the pleasure of presenting to uh, prospects who are evaluating our uh, entity management solution, and if I were to put myself in the role of, of the uh, the people that we present to, quite often they're thinking about, again, that job's to be done. How is this going to help me in my day-to-day -day, uh, work? Uh, and security does come up, but it's not always sort of top of mind at all times. Uh, that said, in the world that we're living in in uh, 2018, soon to be 2019, uh, this is something that really should be uh, really front and, front and center when you're evaluating any sort of a technology solution. So we, we do want to talk about uh, different ways to sort of think about security and how it plays a role in providing or selecting an entity management solution. And so a very popular model in today's uh, entity management software space is having an entity management solution that integrates with a registered agent. Uh, the idea is that the registered agent is able to capture quite a bit of core information about your companies and it can flow directly into the entity management platform that you're using to manage directors, officers, and create minute books and org charts and things of that nature. And so if you are uh, looking to implement or have implemented a solution that has that type of integration, then you really need to sort of peel back the onion quite a bit on the registered agent. Who actually is providing that service to me at the end of the day? And we're not going to talk a lot about service of process or litigation, but certainly one of the core responsibilities of a registered agent is to be that front line of defense when there is SAP and to effectively receive uh, that information and, and distribute it securely to uh, the end client when there is a service of process document. And so from just, you know, our, our vantage point, we know from having spoken with other organizations that there are some registered agents that really outsource that core function of processing SAP documents to uh, not employees of the organization, to uh, really other parts of the world that are doing this, uh, this SAP processing for an organization, which really introduces a lot of security concerns. Also, there are some registered agents that are really not national providers, but rather they're a very loose configuration at best of really disparate companies <clears throat> that have different procedures, technology, and security in place, so not really delivering a consistent product at the end of the day. Uh, and so the, really the point that we're making here is that when you're evaluating the security of an entity management solution, again, if it does have that connectivity with a registered agent, 
really you should apply the same scrutiny to the agent and how they handle service of process and how they deliver information with, again, the, the, the scrutiny that you would apply to the entity management platform itself. So when we talk about these entity management platforms, typically we're talking about uh, browser-based solutions. So there's a term that's called software as a service where uh, you're not actually implementing a piece of software on a server that you have to maintain, but instead you're using a browser to connect to the platform in more of a secure online fashion. And so when we think about these sort of browser-based or, or SaaS solutions, you know, what are some of the considerations that we should have from a security standpoint? Number one, where is my data? How is it hosted? Where is it hosted? And what are the securities and controls in place around really just the data center itself? Uh, and then certainly you want to dive a little bit deeper and talk about the security of what we would call the architecture, you know, the servers, the databases, and, and making sure that information is uh, as secure as possible so that there are uh, you know, annual audits that are occurring, penetration tests that should be occurring to make sure that uh, the, the information, which could be incredibly sensitive, uh, is absolutely as secure as possible. So again, so I think the first consideration is looking at sort of the data center where the information is stored, and then ultimately the infrastructure within that data center should be scrutinized as well. But then when we sort of get a little bit deeper into the entity management software itself, there's also sort of another layer of security that we really need to think about, which you'll see on the next slide. So in the tool itself, um, how are we controlling access within and outside of our organization to the data and documents within the solution? You absolutely want to uh, select a platform that has what is often referred to as role-based permissions. So for example, having the ability to establish administrators who can make changes across the board and see all information, but then also certainly being able to create users that are much more limited as far as the rights in the solution. Users that perhaps have view-only capabilities, users that maybe can't see all companies or can't see more sensitive documents, uh, and the ability to permission in outside uh, parties as well as needed. And then a couple of bullets here, which we'll actually get to uh, when we uh, launch into some of the demonstration uh, later on, is uh, what we're calling folder level security and audit trail capabilities. So the ability to, again, secure and control which documents users have access to. And then when we talk about an audit trail, having that oversight uh, as an administrative user to understand what changes are occurring in the platform. You know, is someone modifying a record? What was the before after information? And not having to sort of guess at that, but having clear oversight into changes and activity that's occurring within your entity management platform. So again, those are a couple of considerations from a security standpoint. The next thing, and this is where Andrea is going to come back into the conversation, we're going to talk about automation and really how that should be one of your top considerations for a solution. Great. Uh, so the, another critical differentiator of the CSC's entity management platform is the concept of automation. As your partner, when CSC completes filings or manages obligations on your behalf, the associated data and documents are automatically updated within the technology. And that really sets us apart from some of our competitors here. The entity management application also automatically calendars your compliance and your good standing events for you based on each of your entity's jurisdictions where you're registered to do business. And it really takes some of the pressure off of you having to be organized or having to remember or track these dates on your own. That tracking capability should be built right into the tool that you're using in this central repository for your corporate data and information. So this resulting tracker tool is essential in keeping our clients informed and on top of their obligations. And then you can also have calendar alerting, and those reminders will ensure that you never miss your critical deadlines. Your technology solution should also be able to proactively monitor each of your entity's registrations and jurisdictions and provide you with alerts. So CSC, we have been in business since 1899. We have a wonderful relationship with the Secretary of State, and we have leveraged that relationship to connect our personal technology tool here to the Secretary of State database in each of the 50 states, Canada, and the Cayman Islands. So you are able to utilize our software tool in order to see that proactive monitoring and receive those alerts via this entity management application. So you can always be uh, confident that your entities are in good standing. You also want to have um, an automated central repository for your documents and files. Um, with this particular application, whether it's a document that's drafted on your own computer or just a scanned piece of paper, uh, when you upload your documents into CSC's entity management platform, you're going to see that the tool will automatically apply a layer of optical character recognition, or OCR for short, 
so your documents become fully text searchable. That way, the next time you need to find your documents or you're looking for that kind of needle in a haystack, if you will, you can search for a word or a phrase within the contents of your documents and dramatically optimize your search procedure and reduce the time that you spend searching for documents. Um, you can also utilize this tool to store both internal and external ownership records. We'll take a look at the org charting capabilities on our demonstration today, and you'll be able to see how you can automatically and dynamically generate graphic or text-based reports um, to see those organization charts. Just by selecting the data and the criteria that's required for your org charts in question, again, you can really automate the process of creating these very robust org charts in just a matter of minutes. And finally, you can also realize automated efficiencies for your global portfolio. We've talked a bit about your global entities. With this entity management tool, when it's paired with our global subsidiary management service that we offer, we can really centralize and automate both your workflow uh, for the completion of your corporate secretarial duties, as well as the capturing of the associated data and documents within this technology tool. Wonderful. I mean, again, automation, I, I'm a big sort of proponent of this being such a, a critical consideration. You know, if the system can't do things for you, like notify you automatically in the change of status of a company or help you automatically generate an org chart or find a document, you know, how is it any better than just doing things in a manual fashion, right? So definitely, uh, I think automation is a critical capability in these types of solutions. Absolutely. Another important consideration, which we're now segueing into, is the concept of having regular enhancements. Technology is evolving probably faster than ever. Um, you know, something that was uh, cutting edge five years ago is considered outdated uh, at this point in time. And so as uh, technology evolves, you don't want to be stuck on a platform that uh, is not really, again, evolving uh, based on uh, technology, technology and sort of the trends of the market. And so this is where we're starting to tout uh, some of our commitment to our platform. And so CSC routinely does evolve the solution. In fact, we're getting ready to segue into a uh, demonstration that highlights some of the newer capabilities within the solution. And ultimately what that roadmap from the vendor really uh, provides is insight into where are they taking this. Again, not only what can it do today, but what can it do tomorrow? Uh, what can it do a year from now? And so uh, as you evaluate a technology platform, I think it's a fair question to ask the vendor, what have you developed in the last six to 12 months? What's on your roadmap for the next six to 12 months? And just get a, a sense that there is a commitment from that vendor uh, to the future of that solution so that you're not stuck on a platform that is ultimately uh, not changing or evolving. And so with that, uh, I think what we're going to do now is talk in some specific detail about some of the enhancements that CSC has launched over the last uh, year, really within, for the most part, the last six to nine months. We've been very busy. It's been very exciting. Absolutely. Um, and so the normal cadence, if you will, is we often launch new features every uh, three to four months. So usually there's three to four upgrades uh, per year. And when I say upgrades, we refer to an upgrade as a release when we're rolling out new features. And in some cases, a release may have a single feature, but that's actually kind of the exception to the rule. It's much more common that when we do one of these release upgrades, there are multiple capabilities that become available to our customers. Because we do take that browser-based approach, when we launch new capabilities, our clients automatically get access to those new features, <clears throat> which is really exciting. Uh, you're not in a situation where you're somehow falling behind, not on the latest version of the system, nor do we play uh, the game, so to speak, of having different packages. Uh, there's not a situation where, oh, well, you're on the, the bronze package, and if you want that new feature, you need to be on the gold package. All of our clients get all the functionality dynamically with the way that we roll out our, our capabilities. And so the timeline that you're seeing here uh, is from this past year, and so we have made a number of improvements to our org charting capabilities to complement what was already a very powerful aspect of the platform. We've made some enhancements around uh, reporting, around uh, audited changes within the solution, and then there are some very exciting changes around document management, including drag and drop, which I'm excited to show, and then folder level security, which in fact is that sort of sneak preview. This is a feature that we're getting ready to launch broadly to uh, our user community uh, this coming Monday, but uh, we're giving you a chance to kind of see a sneak preview of that new feature today.